now the Greg and Greg combination has their first win. Can you believe it? Wow. Uh, you know, he told me a month ago we were going to get one for the years out, and uh, we felt like we gained on it last week a little bit. The team's been coming together. We're, we're just we're just working hard at the shop, and uh, my thanks to everybody. You know, the, the pit crew. Thank you, Billy. The pit crew has been working hard. The pit stops have been picking up every week for the last three weeks, and uh, Greg stays on top of the wheel all race long. He never gives up on us, and uh, I'm I'm just real happy. I don't I don't know what to say. Might have a little pressure on you too, because you've been fast in the traditional car and the COT. Not bad, not bad. The whole program's coming together. Uh, this is what he needed. This is what we needed as a group to start rolling into next year. Hopefully, we're going to gain some momentum here going into the rest of the season. So, I just I can't say enough for these guys, and they've been sticking behind us. And, uh, and they've been through some tough times this year, and we're just working hard, so it feels good. All right, that's Greg Irwin. And Doc, uh, are we just a little premature? He's still got to cross the finish line, right, Biffle? He still has to get back there behind. Remember, you know, he ran through all that debris, so he's behind the pace bar. And again, folks, you, these cameras are able to iris up and give you a lot more light than is actually out there. I remember doing qualifying years ago at Talladega, and it was pitch dark, and it looked like it was daytime, but you couldn't see a thing. That's why it is so tough, but it is getting dark here. Remember, uh, sunset was 7.06 local time. And that was just uh, minutes ago, so they had promised these guys they would not make them put them in any kind of harm's way by making them run in the dark. And so when he comes by to take lap 210, he will get the checkered flag. Looking out the window right now, Jerry, the black asphalt on the racetrack would hire, hide anything if there was debris out there. Everything looks very dark looking from a driver's perspective. So congratulations like, to Greg Biffle, huh? Looks like the old Aflac Duck's going to get a checker here. Greg Biffle, 37-year-old driver, had gone 28 races. His last win was at Homestead at the end of finale of 2006. All right, buddy, right there. Check the flag. And Biffle takes the win at Kansas Speedway in what was an unbelievably long day, but he doesn't care. Right now, he is a winner in 2007. Can't keep Greg Biffle down long. He's too good for a race car driver. Finished second at Dover a week ago. This team really starting to come. You talked about how the crew and how hard they've worked. Greg Irwin and company. Here they come running across and to try to celebrate NASCAR. Wants to keep them away from the car. So they can inspect the car. They just want to come over and give their driver a big hug. He's probably thinking this finally. Don't touch the car. Don't dent it. <laughs> I want this thing to roll through tech perfect. He said, I've waited since November of a year ago to be able to smile and celebrate in victory lane. He drove a heck of a race. Look at Greg Biffle. What a great race car driver. Well, it was just a matter of time before he got back on track. You knew that. He's such a good driver. You couldn't hold him back. You know, I've never seen a driver cross the start-finish line, then turn around and go back the other way. I think I'd have made another lap, you know, just to make sure. Well, the field is frozen. You see all these guys moving around each other. The field has already been frozen. As long as these cars just drive across the line, they're going to freeze them where they were. Greg just pulls down, and all these other guys pass him. But he's still the winner. Yeah, unlike what happened a few years ago at the Bush race uh, at Bristol, where Mark Martin pulled down pit road, and here's some contact. Here's some a little bit of a discussion. They're not happy with each other. The 26 car of McMurray and the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Remember the sandwich that took place there. Menard was involved. He was sort of the meat in that sandwich. I think Paul Menard was the innocent uh, victim there, along with Denny Hamlin of the contact. Yeah, and I think that uh, what happened with Jimmy McMurray was totally unintentional. Just racing hard. He didn't mean to take these guys out. I'm sure he feels bad about Jamie it. Jamie McMurray's not going to get up and hit the side of the 15 on purpose. It's Absolutely. just not going to happen. Absolutely. He is not going to do that. Well, they're pushing the 16 car to victory lane. Jimmy Johnson, uh, the 48 car, finishes third and takes over the lead in the chase. Dave? Uh, Jerry, it's very interesting coming to the start-finish line the last time, though. I know you and the 07 were sort of interested in whether or not the 16 might be the victor. Yeah, he was, he was clearly out of gas. I feel terrible for Greg. He's been working so hard to, to win a race and is, uh, you know, up there in position to win it. But if you don't maintain pace car speed, um, you, you don't you don't hold your position. And it was clear to everyone that he couldn't do it. Uh, if he could have, he would have stayed on the bumper of the pace car to the finish line. So, in my opinion, where he coasted across the finish line relative to the other cars that could maintain pit road speed is where he should finish. 
And therefore, that would put you second instead of third because the 07 was ahead of you. It would. I'm all about me right now. I know it put me second. <laughs> hey, but it's more points. <laughs> it is more points. Um, from where we were before that rain came down to where we are now, uh, I had a great car and we just had some troubles throughout the day. And I'm glad that I got a strong enough car where I could race my way up. Uh, I can't thank the engine shop enough in Hendrick Motorsports, chassis shop, and these guys in this 48 team. I put them through a lot of hard work this weekend and we, uh, we rebounded nicely. Great recovery for the reigning champion. Mike? Well, Dave, normally when you finish second, there's reason to celebrate, but when it's at a track that's your hometown track, a place where you've dreamt of winning your entire life, second one may not have just as much meaning. What are your thoughts right now? <laughs> I don't know what to think. Uh, you know, I mean, I thought you at least had to finish on your own power across the finish line. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if we were supposed to wait on them or what we were supposed to do, but, um, you know, nonetheless, it was a good day for us. Uh, you want to win when you come back to your hometown. It's been a long day and it's been pretty pretty wild. Radio quit there at the end and it's just uh, <laughs> it's been been wild. It does sound like you're questioning the finish. Well, I, I mean, it's kind of weird he couldn't couldn't make it across the finish line, but uh, I don't think anybody knows. I mean, Jimmy and Jeff behind me didn't know either, so uh, I don't know what's going on. Clip Boyer, second place finisher. NASCAR is confirming that the 16 car is the victor. He, uh, the field was frozen uh, before that came across, and so Greg Biffle will be the winner. Let's head down where Allen has caught up with him in victory lane. Yeah, instead of the driver getting out of victory lane in the shower of confetti, you walked in here with a quiet car. Where did you run out of fuel? Well, I didn't run out. Uh, it still had a little bit of fuel, but I, I went off in the grass, and they, they, they said, will it run? I said, yeah, but they told me to get out of the car. They wanted to push it, so I got out, and... Uh, they want to push over to victory lane. I think they don't want anybody messing with the car, so I'm not sure I was going to get out of that grass either once I got down in there. You never led this race until 36 laps to go. Did the race come to you, or does your car get better? Well, a little of both. You know, the car definitely got better, and uh, Greg Irwin, you know, this, this, uh, he's really got this program turned around and doing a great job with it, and, uh, you know, just excited to get Aflac in victory lane. You know, we only had a couple races with him this season, and uh, pretty excited about it. But, you know, once we got out in clean air, this car was so good. And, uh, you know, I just, just hit my marks, hit my marks. And, uh, you know, I was giving up a little bit, and I knew the 07 was catching me a little bit, but I didn't want to make a mistake, so I just stayed on it and, uh, you know, didn't want to make any mistakes. The wreck at lap 175, I think you were running sixth or so at the time. How'd you miss it? Uh, I don't know. We were running, I think, third or fourth. But uh, I, don't, I don't know how I missed it. Uh, I slid the tires. I think I slid the tires, and, uh, you know, I said, we, we were debating whether to pit for tires or not, and, uh, you know, I couldn't feel them thumping, you know, like I flat-spotted them, so I decided to stay out and uh, just worked out for us. So excited. First one of the season. Congratulations.